first I'd like to show you a little bit about hardening off. Before you take plants out from this wonderful environment here in the greenhouse where it's all warm, there's no wind and everything, you need to prepare them a little bit for their future life. And what people used to do is haul them all out and put them outside for the day and bring them back in at night for about four days before planting out. More recently, it's become, well, by experiment, people have discovered that actually the one thing that you need to harden them off for is wind. And so what you can do, instead of all that hauling in and hauling back out business, you can simulate the wind. Just stroke them like this. Over a period of about four days, do it about once a day, or twice if you get round to it. I do 60 strokes at a time. And that hardens them off. Okay, so a little bit more about companion planting, polyculture, mixed crops, whatever you want to call it. I've got my leeks here. I'm going to plant out my leeks. And this is the leek bed. But as you can see, some plants are already here. Now these are self-seeded. That means I didn't sow them or plant them. There were another generation of plants here last year. But they produced seed and the seed fell to the ground and up it's come. And we've got some foxgloves, which are self-seeded. And this one over here, which is garden orich, which is a little salad plant. And so I'm gonna work the uh, leeks around them. And so this bed is going to end up as partly my intention and partly nature's intention. So you could see that as, as, as a combination. It's my style of gardening. I think one thing about gardening is everybody needs to find their own style. Okay, here I'm planting leeks. Excellent vegetable. Easy to grow. Fantastic stuff throughout the winter. First I'm going to loosen the soil. And then I'm going to put the plants in, and then I'm going to water them in. Press down on it, and then just slightly ease it a little bit like that. Normally I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bother with loosening the soil, but we haven't had much rain recently. The soil's very hard. I'm going to be planting with a dibber rather than a trowel, and I need to be able to get that into the ground. This is a no-dig garden. I never dig. But loosening the soil a little bit, is not the same as digging. I'm not disturbing the soil profile. So what I do, I put the, put the fork in. Stage two is to measure where the plants are going. So we'll have one in the corner there and they go in at nine inches apart. This is my 18 inch measuring trowel. So I measure to there and then we'll have one in between. Then. Then coming this way, 18 inches, 9 inches, and I won't put another one here because we're getting too close to the foxgloves. Those foxgloves are going to grow. So that's as far as we're going in this direction. Stage three, make a hole. Pop the plant in. and then water it in. You can put a bit of soil back down, it's not really necessary. So basically, and you can see why I took the trouble of loosening the soil to begin with. Pop in the plant, let it go right down, and then water it in. So this watering is very similar to what I did with the other plants. I'm getting the water down there into the bottom of the hole where the plant needs it. Not pouring it on the surface. They don't need water on the surface. They need the water where their roots are. So. These plants are actually a little bit smaller than I would really like to plant them out, but I'm going away. I'm going away to teach course, and I won't be able to wait for a week or two for them to get any bigger. So they'll be all right like this, but they might have preferred to be a little bit bigger. About the size of a pencil, 
is the ideal size for leeks. So I tried to get the plant down into the bottom of the hole because where it's covered by soil it won't go green and that's what you want. You want a white part on the bottom of the leek. So you make the holes reasonably deep and get your plants well down into them. Here we have the garlic and if you look at the garlic you can see it's already beginning to go yellow. So it'll be another three or four weeks before we're harvesting this garlic. And so in the meantime I can plant some of this purple sprouting broccoli in between the garlic plants and it can start growing. It's ready to go out. If I waited three or four weeks it would be too late. So it can start growing now while the garlic is just going through the last part of its life cycle. So what I'm doing here is I'm making more complete use of the land. The timing is quite important on this. You don't want to plant whatever it is that you're putting amongst the garlic too soon. I've done it with various different things. You can do it with lettuce, you can do it with cabbage, you can do it with radicchio. I've even done it with a mixture of purple sprouting broccoli and radicchio. Because the purple sprouting broccoli goes on till spring, whereas the radicchio is harvested during the winter. So it's working with time, working with time, but always make sure that the things aren't too close together and they don't crowd each other too much. There was one time when I planted out some calabrese in amongst the purple sprouting broccoli and I did it too early. And by the time the purple sprouting, by the time I took out the garlic, the calabrese was really short of space and it never came to anything. I need to know how many of these I can fit in. I've got six, there's no way I can fit six in. The purple sprouting broccoli needs to be placed at sort of three feet, 90 centimetres apart, maybe 60 centimetres, two feet at a, at a pinch. Let's see how much space we've got. Using my trusty measuring tool, got one, two, three, four. So that is six feet or two meters. So if I put one in here and one, two, another one in here, that'll be about right. I, I would love to fit another one in there, but that would just be squeezing it in too much. So you've got to be careful about spacing. I mean, this applies to gardening anyway, but it applies even more when you're doing mixtures. Don't try to crowd things too much. Okay, so I've told you a little bit about how I plant vegetables, and later on I'll be showing you lots of other things about how I grow things in the garden. This, actually, this planting, this is the maximum disturbance this soil ever gets. And one of the future subjects I'll be telling you about is no deep gardening. Don't dig. What you've seen today is the most disturbance this soil ever sees. See you soon.